John Singleton's film, Higher Learning, is a 90s film which touches on the realities of college life for first years. Although the movie was released 23 years ago, this movie and its subject matter are still relevant today. Singleton touches on intersectionality within social class, race, and gender through the eyes of the four main characters. The four freshmen are Kristen, Remy, Monet, and Malik, who has different experiences at Columbus University. Kristen is a white girl from Orange County, California, who has financial issues and explores her sexuality after being sexually assaulted. Remy is a white guy from Illinois who was portrayed as an outcast until he got caught up with students who were neo-Nazi members. Remy finds himself struggling to find his identity. Monet is a black girl who appears to be naive. Monet plays the supportive role to both Kristen and Malik during their trying times. Last but not least, Malik is a black student athlete. He runs track and field for the university. Through Malik, the audience is able to see the financial burden and constant racial profiling and discrimination which he faces while navigating through his first year. I plan to analyze the representation of race in the context of African American experience at the predominantly white institution. It is common for most PWIs to promote diversity, but in the context of racial diversity, there's a discrepancy which makes it hard for minority students to feel like they belong at the institution. It has been documented that African Americans experience racial stereotypes and discrimination from faculty, staff, and peers. Higher Learning, in my opinion, did a great job in representing the black experience at a PWI through the eyes of Malik. The audience is able to see Malik, Fudge, and other being victims of racial profiling by campus security and their white peers on a regular basis. In the film, when the black and white students had conflicts with one another, we often saw the campus security use different language with the two racial groups. The African Americans were commonly called gangsters, whereas the Caucasian students were referred to as kids. The choice of language used reinforced stereotypes that blacks are associated with violence and crime. When the black students came to the frat house in support of both Kristen and Monet, the frat boys made sure to call the black students thugs to position themselves as victims in the situation. The campus security also often asked the black students for their IDs. With the frequent confrontations between the security and students in the film, they should know that they are students, but instead they attempt to show off their superiority by still requesting their IDs. Microaggressions were not the only things that African Americans faced at Columbus University. Malik was a victim of a few hate crimes. One night, Remy was simply reading his book outside of a building on campus when Scott approached him and asked him if he would like to hang out with him and his brothers. We later find out Scott and his friends were neo-Nazi members. As Remy spent more time with the neo-Nazi students, he began to pick up their identity. There was a scene in the film when Malik was with his love interest, Asia, and Remy comes up calling him a coon and insulting him for wearing a Black Panther Party t-shirt. Malik was infuriated and later went to Remy's dorm room to confront him about what he said and challenged Remy to call him the N-word to his face. At that moment, the audience could realize Remy wasn't secure in his new identity, but since Malik pushed himself in the room, Remy could not back down. The intense altercation turned into Remy pulling a gun in Malik's face while saying racial slurs and soon runs out his room. This scene was a turning point of the movie. Following this incident, Malik goes after Remy, but ironically, Malik was the one who got detained by the campus security. Fudge and other African-American students found themselves supporting Malik. The police ended up finding Remy's Nazi flag and asked for the African-American students to leave. This scene was very contentious since the police asked the black students to leave and didn't ask the white students to leave until Fudge challenged him. Like in Dear White People, it was up to the students to bring awareness to the issue because the administration was allowing for the hate crimes to occur. To alleviate the racial tensions, Kristen decided to organize a unity rally, which quickly turned deadly when Remy shot Malik's love interest due to the pressures from his neo-Nazi friends. Once Remy noticed, that, noticed what he did, he committed suicide as the police were trying to console him in his emotional distress. I think Singleton did a great job representing multiple experiences individuals face when navigating a new space like college. Although I think this thought-provoking film did a good job projecting realistic experiences, 
Singleton did replicate some stereotypes in the film. A few of the stereotypes which he used were white cops being prejudiced against black males and white women being sexually assaulted. I appreciate that he put a twist on African American characters and did not project them as lazy, violent students. Although there were scenes where there is violence taking place, I do not think it is Singleton's way of projecting African Americans as aggressive. I believe that it is his way of showing that African Americans have pride and passion behind their cause and demands to be respected.